Welcome to Simon Dev. In this JavaScript tutorial, we're going to be exploring implementing Minecraft. Ooh! Pretty sure you all know what Minecraft is, even if you haven't played it. It was developed about nine years ago by a company called Mojang and went on to become one of the biggest games of all time. The game itself is relatively simple. You have this procedural blocky world that you can interact with in a variety of ways. You can alter and modify the world, excavating out areas, building massive structures, that sort of thing. The world is procedurally generated with forests, lakes, oceans, tundra, different climates and biomes reflecting the variety in the world. We used 3GS just to get a basic renderer up, uh, but everything here is mostly written from scratch. The code is all available on GitHub, so take a look if you're interested. The link is in the description below. And if anything doesn't make any sense, feel free to comment below. What we're going to go over today, I'll show you how we go from I want to make Minecraft to a complete working world. I'll go over what I was thinking, how I planned this out, and what mistakes I made along the way. All right, so let's dig in and build this thing from scratch, shall we? So Minecraft is, graphically at least, a simple game. There's not a whole hell of a lot going on that's super complex. It's a super boxy environment, so the first thing we need to do is get a box drawing up on the screen. Now getting a box up on the screen isn't hard. The challenge comes from getting more boxes on the screen. You can see here that we can draw a single box just fine. Frame rate is good, but as we add more boxes, we can, we can tank the frame rate pretty easily. So we, we add a few thousand or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of boxes, then the frame rate will sink, even with the best GPU. One of the first things I thought about was how to render the world. If you architected the code well right from the beginning, you might be able to just get away with a super slow drawing method where each individual voxel is drawn every frame, and then drop in a replacement later as it reaches its limits. But I was pretty sure that we'd hit some frame rate limit really quickly, and so I started to think about how to draw this a bit quicker. There's a bunch of ideas I had floating around in this area that could all potentially speed things up with varying degrees of complexity. You could stitch together meshes and cache and rebuild them as necessary. You could use instancing to do something similar by offloading some of the work to the rendering pipeline. You could use planes or cubes for finer or coarser control. You could atlas the textures together to reduce draw calls and merge meshes, etc. Since I wanted to get something working that was somewhat performant, but I didn't want to do a ton of work, I chose to just use instancing with cubes. All right, so that gives us the beginnings of a working world. It's big enough, but there's a bunch of things we need to do. I'll just go ahead and add some small touches here so that this looks a little bit more like a world. What I've done is gone and added a skybox and just some white cubes in the sky. They're randomly placed up high and I threw a whitish texture on them. Now, first off, if I move to the end of the world, I'll just fall off. That's a problem. So we need to make this whole world continuous. One easy way is to chunk up the world into squares. For the sake of simplicity, imagine the visible world is nine squares with you being at the center. As you move in one direction and change from being in the center square to one of the outer squares, what we do is throw away the old squares that are too far away and generate new squares just for the ones that came into view. See, here I'm just moving towards the horizon, and now the land is popping into existence as we move, giving us an infinite world effect. Now we're getting somewhere. The next thing I did was start looking into adding the actual interaction with the world. Minecraft is uh, Minecrafty because you can dig, remove, add, crap, that kind of thing. So we need to be able to do the same thing. We can break this up into two actions. There's some similarities between them. First up, deleting voxels from the world. The way I chose to do this was the easiest way I could think of, which is to basically draw a line right from the camera straight ahead and find the first cube that intersects with that line. This is just a ray cube intersection test, which is a couple of lines of code and most libraries already implement it for you. 3JS happens to have one already, so we just use that. Once you have the cube that's directly in front of you, all you need to do is hide it. In our case, I just set the visible flag to false and then mark this section of the world as needing to be rebuilt and voila, it's gone. I'll go walk around a bit and delete a few more, but that's all there is to it. I cast a ray in the direction I'm looking at and uh, check all the voxels nearby, find the closest one, and then hide it. That's it. So let's move on to adding blocks to the world. 
Adding blocks is a bit more complex, but not noticeably so. We do the exact same thing we did for delete, in that we cast a ray forward and trying to find the closest voxel. But, instead of deleting it, what I'm going to do is look directly above it and see if there's anything there. If there's another voxel above it, we don't do anything. But if there's free space above it, then we'll insert one into the world. So, once you have that closest cube, you check above it, and then you insert a new cube into the world and tell the section of the world to be rebuilt again. And voila, your new block appears. I'll walk around a bit and throw down a bunch more of these blocks. Now, I could have gotten a more complex implementation that you build blocks on the side of other blocks or something like that, but we're just keeping this super simple. So you can build up, but to build side by side, you need to build everywhere and then delete the ones you don't want. So we have some problems with our implementation right now. One being that if I dig down, for example, there's nothing underneath. It's just a void. If we remove a few blocks and then jump in, we kind of fall into the nothingness. Now, since I don't want to just fall forever, I added a safety net in the camera code that says if I fall far enough, we reset above the land. So here, I remove a bunch of blocks and then jump in and fall through the world. Without the safety net, I'll just fall forever. So I reset the camera position to above the world, and then we fall from up there and eventually hope that we make our way back to the land. Anyway, the point is, I don't think we want these voids in our world where you can fall into an eternity of nothing. So let's fix that. There's a couple ways you could do this, each with their own trade-offs. An easy possible way is to just pre-generate the land to a certain depth. Here I pre-generated it to two voxels deep, and of course, we could make it 10 or 20 or 100 or 1000, it doesn't matter. One problem is that you need a smarter renderer in place if you do this, because all of those voxels are potentially chewing up GPU time. Even though they're not visible and just getting discarded, they still have to flow through the GPU and waste shader time before getting depth tested out. Ideally, we need to have a better way to do this that doesn't rely on the GPU to call all of this for us. Another problem is that I can still dig through the world. It just takes a bit longer. Now, maybe Minecraft allows this, or it doesn't, or it has some sort of impassable layer at some point. Now, what I did was, when you remove a voxel, I check around underneath it, and I just add new voxels in. So, it doesn't matter how far you dig, we'll just keep adding stuff. See, so now when you dig, you can dig as far as you want. There's no bottom. I could technically put in a restriction of how far down you can go, but I didn't. The only limit is wherever we blow out memory. So digging and adding voxels roughly works. The next thing I did was try to make the world a little bit more interesting. Right now we have an infinite plane of grass in all directions, but Minecraft's world has hills, oceans, mountains, that kind of stuff. A good starting place to look for this kind of procedural generation is Perlin or Simplex Noise. If you're not familiar with those, they're just a way of getting multi-dimensional continuous randomness. If that's a bit confusing, think of it like this. You can randomly choose values. Let's say I randomly at every voxel choose a height, but there's no continuity here. It's not continuous, meaning it doesn't gradually go from one value to the next. It's totally random each voxel cell. Now imagine instead, I decide to choose one single random height every 50 voxels or so, and between them, I just blend. It would look something like this. See how it's more continuous? It slopes gently up from each random point. This is, in super hand-wavy terms, what Perlin or Simplex Noise gives you. They give you continuous, multi-dimensional noise, which is great for a procedural world because you can have gently sloping hills and valleys and that kind of thing. Now that the noise is integrated into the world, you can also run it through a bunch of different filters, layer it on top of itself a few times, run it through magical functions to get different effects, but the gist of it is this, sampling a continuous noise function to build out the procedural world a bit. We can keep going down this road quite a bit more, making the procedural world much more complex and realistic, but for part one of this video, I'm stopping at hills. What we'll do next though, is add some different biomes to the world just to show how it's done. First up, whenever the land is super low, we'll consider that to be ocean. That is, whenever the height of the ground is less than some threshold, we'll consider that to be water area. And close to the water, we'll stop using the grass tiles and we'll start using sand tiles, which will give us a bunch of beaches. You can see that we've got beaches here and you can of course dig and do whatever else you want here, just like you could with the grass. 
the water will need to be a bit special. And what we'll do here is instead of the cubes we've been using, we'll use a single plane, throw a semi-transparent water texture on it, and then any voxels that are on the surface of the water, we use this instead. It's kind of looking waterish, pretty decent stuff. You can walk on it, which isn't right, but I'll add some swimming or whatever in a later update. But we have oceans, which is awesome, starting to look kind of cool. Since this is just part one, and I intend to follow up here, I'm not going to go nuts and keep adding stuff. The last big thing I'll add here is trees, which give some character to the landscape. Now, trees are just voxels, like everything else. We just need to decide two things, where to put them and what shape to make them. Shape is easy. We need a trunk, which consists of a couple of voxels in a line, and then I'll, what I'll try and do is copy the pictures of trees I saw in Minecraft. The leaves kind of look like a box with the corners missing, and they're often two layers, so I'll just do the same thing, and it ends up looking like this. See, the trunk is just a couple log voxels, and I can even chop it, and you can see inside and see the rings of the tree. And the leaves are, of course, voxels as well, which means I can go ahead and remove these if I want to and reshape this entire thing, or delete it completely. Finally, there's two last touches that I want to add to make this all look a bit nicer, and that is distance fog and tone mapping. See, when we walk around, the world just kind of pops into view abruptly, which isn't cool. I mean, it works, but it would be nicer if it just kind of came in smoothly and you didn't notice it, and we can use distance fog to do that. All we're going to do is, uh, the further something is away, we'll blend the color between that and the color of the sky. See here in this example, I've expanded the world considerably. It's a lot bigger now, but the edge is pretty much covered by this distance fog and blends into the sky seamlessly. If I turn the effect off, everything pops back into view and stands out. And so as I move towards the horizon, you can see trees popping in and out, which isn't visually appealing. So we turn the fog back on and as you move, nothing pops into existence anymore. I'm also going to add a tone mapping operator here, which I just bolted right into the fragment shader. I can do a tutorial on tone mapping if anybody is interested, but it's essentially a way of mapping HDR, or high dynamic range, to LDR, or low dynamic range. Range being the range of colors, and your monitor being the one with the more limited range. So, it's starting to look pretty decent, nice and bright, and nothing is super washed out or overexposed. I'm also going to break up the monotony of the landscape by varying the color from one voxel to the next. What we'll do is define a valid range of colors for each biome, and randomly choose something from within that range. That way, we get a bit more breakup in the pattern. Otherwise, you have this perfectly identical pattern across the landscape that just looks a bit boring. I think the Minecraft wiki lists the different colors for each biome, so I'll read that in the future to get some better variation. What I'm doing here is just playing with the luminance a bit, varying it by a few percent. We could just flat out use randomness here, but I'm using a secondary noise calculation to vary it continuously across the landscape. And I feel it comes out pretty decent. That about wraps up part one of this. I showed you how to go essentially from a single cube on the screen to getting an entire voxel world up and running, and it expands infinitely in every direction. You can move as far as you want, it doesn't matter. We'll just keep generating more terrain. We added interactivity to it and a few basic biomes and plants. In future updates, if there's interest, I can add better shading to the voxels, a better procedural generation for the world, more biomes, multiplayer support to make this into a much more complete and functioning Minecraft clone. For now, I hope this was easy enough to follow, and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, give it a like and hit that subscribe button in the corner. Also, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. If you have ideas for future videos, leave a comment below. Until next time, cheers everyone.